Let's now talk about the idea of the complement of an event. Finding the complement of an event, um, sometimes it's really easy to find the probability of a specific event by first finding a complement, kind of working backwards. So let's just see if we can grasp the idea of what the complement is. The complement of an event is defined as actually a set of all possible outcomes in the sample space that do not belong to the event of interest. Whoops, missed a T here, event of interest. Essentially, we think of it as everything outside the event. Now, this may make more sense if we do a Venn diagram. So, this box rep represents the entire universe. This is my universe. And inside this universe, I have an event that I'm going to call Event A. So, if Event A happens, that means it's inside here. Well, what is outside of A? All of this is outside of A. So this, everything outside the A, is the complement of event A. Now, given an event A, the complement of event A is denoted simply as A with a superscript of C. Now, there's a couple of different ways that we note it. Some books may use a prime. I've actually seen some use a bar. I think that's a no-no. We use a bar for something very specific, uh, commonly, which we'll get to later. Uh, I just want to make you aware of this notation, although I won't be using it in this course uh, because you may see it someplace. But A with a superscript of C is the most common. That means that this, everything out here, must be a complement. And you notice if I take A, combine it with A complement, I have my entire universe. So perhaps A is getting um, two heads. Well, out here would be everything having the outs. No heads, one heads, or three heads. Now, let's consider the following table here. We're going to leave the idea of tossing coins for a few minutes. Let event A be observe a freshman. Now, the probability of A is the number of ways A can happen divided by the number of sample space. Well, here's my freshman. And what this represents is the, some survey that was done, and we ended up with um, this table based on a total of 288 students. And they asked simply the hours of work, less than 5, 5 to 10, 10 to 20, more than 20, and I have the totals worked out for you here. So right here... That is the event freshman. There are 24 that said less than 5, 12, 5 to 10, 13, and so forth, for a total of 66. So the number of ways it can happen, n of a, is going to be 66 divided by the total of the sample space, which is 280 people in here, so that's 280. Now, because this is actually sample data, we should probably put that hat on here to indicate that this is actually an empirical probability. This is not theoretical. So let's now take a look at the complement of A. And again, I'm going to toss this hat on here because this is in empirical. Well, all of these guys, whoops, right here, are in the complement. And the totals, change that because I kind of wrote over the totals. Right here is the total sophomore, the total juniors, and the total seniors. If you add these up, you will get 214. So the number way the complement can happen is 214. What's in the sample space? 280. Now notice here, if I take these probabilities and add them together, if I take the probability of A plus the probability of A complement, because this covers everything, this has to be equal to 1 because it covered my entire universe. Well, the probability of A was 66 over 280. A complement was 214 over 280. When you add that, you get 280 over 280, which is equal to 1. It has to be. Now, I guess here I should have done this. It doesn't really matter because this applies to both theoretical and empirical. This is always going to be true. 
Now, you, you got to be careful because if I were to convert these to decimals, I'm not sure it would happen in this case, but if I were to convert these to decimals and they end up being a decimal approximation, they weren't exact. If I added up the decimal values, I may not get one. I may be off uh, by a factor of rounding. So if event A is observer freshman, the complement is everything else. Now, event B is works more than 20 hours. So I, I want to identify that event along with the complement. Well, what works more than 20 hours? Let's see here. Let's get rid of all that writing and start over. I see more than 20 hours. That's right here. And it has a total of 104. So um, let's not do the probabilities. Let's just identify it. So I just identified the works more than 20. And then the complement would be everything else, less than 5, 5 to 10, 10 to 20, which would be right here. Now, I included the totals, but actually, technically, it, this is the complement, and this is actually the event right here. I included the totals so that we could use this in case we needed to calculate probabilities. So here we have the event, and we have the complement of the event, which is everything else in the universe. Again, thinking of the entire table as my universe. Okay, the last thing we're going to do here is we're going to create a table that represents the possible outcome for playing the game of craps. And I want to find the probability of rolling other than a 2. Well, the idea here is that this is one dice and this is the outcome of the second dice. And what you do when you play craps, you throw two dice and you add them up. Well, 1 plus 1 is a 2. So if I get 1 on both of them, I get a 2. 1 and 2 is 3. 1 and 3 is 4. So you can see how that works. If the first dice is a 1, this is everything else that could happen on the second dice. This is what you could roll. If the first dice is a 2, 1 and 2 is 3. And obviously I keep adding up. And likewise, 3 and 1 is 4. 3 and 2 is 5. 4 and 1 is 5. 4 and 2 is 6. And keep going. And then just keep right on going here. I think you can kind of see this pattern developing. If not, then simply keep adding. So this is everything that could happen. Now, notice here, for sake of conversation, that if I look down the diagonal, this is all of my sevens. And in craps, except for the come out row, uh, and this is in real craps in Vegas. Um, I'm not so sure about street craps. I try to stay away from that. Uh, the seven, there's more ways than anything else to get a seven. That's why, other than the come out roll, when you get a seven, um, you lose. It's all over. So I said, find the probability of rolling other than a two. Well, you notice that there's 36 different things here. Six times six, there's 36 different combinations here. So that means my N of S, the number of my sample space is 36. Well, if I'm going to try to figure out the probability of getting other than a 2, I need to add up all of these. Well, actually, it's probably easier to find the complement. Because remember, the probability of, I'm going to call this um, event A. I'm going to let this be A. So the probability of A plus the probability of A complement has to be equal to 1. So probability of ruling other than a 2 which is probability of A, plus the probability of A complement, which would be rolling a 2, has to equal 1. Well, I can find the complement easier. There's only one way to do it. So the probability of A plus the complement is 1 out of 36 must be equal to 1. That would then imply or indicate that the probability of A rolling other than a 2 equals 1 minus 1 over 36, which is 35 over 36. Now, you may have been able to quickly easy see that. There's 36 here. One of them is a 2. So that means there's 35 others. Well, you just did the complement. You, you probably didn't have to do all this math, although it's a good idea to write it out so it's pretty clear what you're doing. Um, you probably could have seen it directly from the table. Quite often, working probabilities off of tables like this is much easier uh, than when you're given a set of circumstances where you're told the probability of this event is something, the probability of another event is something, and so forth. 
But this is a quick and easy example of how um, looking for the probability of a specific event is actually easier to find by first locating the complement and using this relationship to find what we're looking for, just a, this teeny bit of algebra.